But I got it the way you are getting your education here now. That is, I worked full time, and then after a full day of work, I was working as a machinist, I then went to classes. And I know how hard that is, but I also know how inspiring it is. Because, you know, work's a good thing to study, but actually doing it is really tough. And it's exhausting. And then to come from a full day work, and then to get into books, and into arguments, and into ideas, that's, that's tiring too. It's tiring, but it's also exciting. It opens a whole different world. And I loved it so much, I thought, hey, I'm, I'm going to stick with this. This education uh, game, this, this looks, that looks a lot better than machining to me. And so that's how I ended up becoming, ultimately, a, a labor educator. Now, I'm very honored to be here, and I've loved the guild. I'll tell you why. There was a time in America, around just after World War II, 1945, where there were over a hundred labor guilds. Every major city in America had a labor guild. They even had the equivalent in Canada. They have all disappeared except this one. And this one is thriving, and it's thriving because of you. It's thriving because of the faculty who volunteer their time. It's thriving because of the staff. And it's thriving because of the archdiocese and their support for this. But mostly, the most important thing is what you do when you leave here and you talk to others about coming and joining the guild, coming to the programs. And by the way, after a few more semesters, some of you may be coming back a lot because you'll be teaching in the guild because that's the way the guild grows also.